Frugalsim videos are powered by Jetline Systems. YouTube, this is Frugal, and I wasn't planning to film this, but I couldn't resist. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. I'm just chilling out. It's Saturday morning. I'm up in A2A's new Bonanza, Beechcraft Bonanza, having a ball. I've actually had this for a little while. I'm trying not to ever reset the aircraft. Those of you who know A2A know they do this thing called AccuSim, which gives you a living, breathing aircraft. Basically, you need to take care of this virtual aircraft as you would the real thing. Otherwise, the things that will fail and the things that would break in real life will fail and they will break in your simulated life as well. So it's very easy in the maintenance hangar to just reset everything, you know, to do crappy landings and treat the aircraft really badly. I just reset everything back to good as new. I'm trying not to do that. I do have a habit of doing that. So I've, I've only got about five hours on this aircraft so far. You can see there's my hops tack down there, about 4.2. So coming up on uh, 4.2, coming up on five hours, I guess. And uh, yeah, loving it. I, so I, I wasn't going to do this. I was. I am going to do a proper, or I wasn't. God, let me start again. I was planning to do a proper full first impressions or review of this A2A aircraft. And I just kind of haven't got around to it because I've been having so much fun just flying it. But that would infer or that would imply that I've got enough experience to go film it. And I really don't because this is a challenging beast. It's a V-tail. Let me pop outside. Beechcraft designed this aircraft to appeal at the end of World War II to the pilots coming back from the front. You know, uh, guys, predominantly guys, sorry, not being sexist, but predominantly guys who were trained to fly for the Air Force, fighters mainly and bombers, looking for a more responsive personal aircraft. This was designed for them. And with that very, very unique looking V-tail, that's what you get here. It doesn't fly like a, a Piper or a Cessna or a typical GA aircraft. I, I've actually left the yoke on, which I never normally do. There's the yoke. So that you can see what I'm doing. Look. You see how much I am not moving this? <laughs> Just a tiny amount of movement. And this aircraft responds. Get a little ham-fisted, and you end up really noticing that this is balancing almost. It feels like you're balancing on top of a needle. It's a challenge to fly. It's a challenge to land. It's a challenge to take off. It's a lot of fun. It is not your typical GA aircraft. And if you're looking for a GA aircraft that's something different, then I highly recommend this. This being AccuSim, by the way, I have had failures, which is great. I haven't had failures in AccuSim aircraft before, except those of my own doing. I had a fuse go out, and it screwed up my fuel gauges. I had no idea how much fuel I had, and I had to go down here and, and find the circuit brakes, which are over here. Let me remove the yokes. Down here, they all work. And one of those has popped out, so I popped it back in. Incidentally, look how cool this is. I'm going to drop on down here. Look, look, look. If I think my, uh, let's say my altimeter needle, I'm not, not really feeling it. There's something's off there. It's not. It's actually perfect. But I can just uh, uh, just tap it. Come on, you okay? <laughs> I can do that with all the needles. I love that. Great work, A to A. Great work. That is fantastic. So everything is very look, uh, very tactile. You can touch stuff, click stuff, and nudge stuff and bash stuff, and it's it's wonderful. This is my favorite A to A aircraft. A title previously for me at least reserved for that icon of World War II, the B-17 Flying Fortress. A2A's AccuSim version of the B-17 is phenomenal and was always my favorite because it's such a challenge and evoked such nostalgia and history for me. This has overtaken it. This is a hugely challenging aircraft to fly. I had, I think, got a bit of a bug. Look, down here. You can swap in and out Flight 1's GTN 650, 750. So I've got the 650 here. I did have them both, the 650 and the 750, and it took up all this display here. But I just changed it for this video, or this flight, back to 650, and I'm, I'm seeing this thing's display up here, which, which feels a little wrong. It doesn't bother me. Maybe it's not a bug. I haven't read the manual on the avionics. And that's important, by the way, to note, is that I haven't read the manual on the avionics. Let me say that again. <laughs> I haven't read the manual on the avionics. And the reason I keep repeating that is to understand how these work, you need to go and get the Bendix King KR870 TSO and the Bendix King KX155 TSO manuals. These, people don't realize this about the AccuSim aircraft, these are full and complete and redonkulously accurate simulations of the actual avionics stacks in the actual aircraft. It's not just a complete simulation of the aircraft itself, 
it really is, to all intents and purposes, a study level systems sim, in the same way that the 737NGX from PMGG is a study level systems sim of that aircraft, the 737NG. This is a study level systems and uh, aircraft and flight model and engine simulator of the Beechcraft VTEL Bonanza, and it is absolutely stonky. Huge challenge. You can have a bit of wind here, you can see the nose is yawing left and right. As always with the Accusim aircraft, it has a full hangar. I'll show you that once we get back on the ground. I actually don't know where I am. Like I said, I wasn't, whoa, I wasn't planning to film this. I was just going to chill out. So, you know what? Let me, 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 let me put the uh, autopilot on. I'm going to get rid of the yoke here. Drop one down here. I've not used the autopilot yet. This will be fun. Um, where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm going to put the autopilot on and we'll go heading hold and we might as well go altitude hold, flight director. You're going to hold, so it should hold my altitude, what, 7,100-ish, I'm not really following the laws. Not really holding my heading, though, are you? What, 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 what? What's going on here? Hang on, well. What are you doing to me? Heading, there we go, flight director, heading, altitude. And the autopilot's not on, now it is. There we go. So we'll turn the heading back around here just hold this heading. I need to find out where I took off from uh, K-Blue. Orbex is K-Blue, which is what this beautiful scenery is here. 8,000 square kilometers? I think it might be miles even, of terrain around K-Blue and Eagle County. California. It's beautiful. Anyway, let's pop down here to this. See if I can find out where I'm supposed to be going. Um, direct to. Direct to. I want to go to nearest airport, Cape Blue. 12.8 miles, go, activate, turn around. Okay, so we can do that. We're gonna turn around, go the other way. Just roll this in, look at that. Autopilot is very, very nice. Very progressive, the way the aircraft just gently blanks over. And I'm loving the scenery, and I'm loving this aircraft, and I'm loving everything about this. I did actually, I did do a pre-flight on this. It being A2A, it being AccuSim, there is a full, full pre-flight walk around that you can do. I did all that and I did the run up. My left mag is a little bit um, not working. So I didn't really, I'm like, yeah, whatever. If I crash, I crash. I'm not filming, now I am. Uh, and I am getting a little bit low, I guess. Let me, let me just pay attention for a second here. Terrain, terrain, yes we know, go to the terrain. Okay, I should be all right, that's yellow, not red. Yeah, we should be fine. The airport itself is at 5,300 feet. We're at 7,100 feet. <laughs> Narrowly missing the Earth. Fabulous. I'm actually gonna, well, we're going, I'm hoping within a year, a year, 18 months, to move from Florida to Colorado. And I've got friends out there and they're living and, and hanging out and doing weekend activities at above 10,000 feet. I thought you needed oxygen above 10,000 feet. That's what I learned from flying simulated airplanes. But apparently, it's okay. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's okay. And uh, yeah, you can actually walk, hike, drive, ride a motorcycle up above 10,000 feet, but that's just by the way. We're not in California, we're not in Colorado here. This is Northern Cali. And we're uh, 12 miles away from Cape Lowe. Need to ride, land on runway 33 because of the wind direction. Anyway, let's pop outside and show you this aircraft since it's on autopilot. The modeling on this is absolutely, as it always is, superb. The uh, defining feature of this, of course, is this V-tail. It doesn't have a single rudder and a single elevator. Everything is combined into this one control. Everything is kind of linked. In fact, if I go back in here, I think I can show you this. If I go down here, can I show you this? I don't know. I remember reading about it. I don't know if you can actually see it. The reason I'm going down here is these they were actually, the yoke should be linked to those. I can't show you that. But anyway, they're, they're kind of linked. So as you roll in the uh, aileron, you start to get some rudder input as well because everything's kind of linked up, which is kind of cool. But because it's this VTAIL, it is a, an incredibly responsive aircraft. Like I said earlier, not a traditional GA aircraft. The attention to detail on this, I say this about every single A2A aircraft I look at, is 
utterly jaw-dropping. It doesn't look much, but you know what? It really is. You try doing this. Look at that. All PBR materials in prepared version 4, of course. Sounds great, looks great. Everything's simulated. These tip tanks are optional. You go into the hangar and add those on, which I did. Tons of little options over there. Look at that beautiful... Is that an, I don't know what that is. Is that an air intake? Can't be. It's an intake, obviously. Not for the engine, of course. Beautiful aircraft. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Says in the manual, you need to treat this aircraft with a bit of respect, that it will bite you. It's the, I think they called it the doctor killer. You know, could people would uh, go and uh, get a little bit of money and go and buy one of these things and then kill themselves because it's, it's actually quite a challenge to fly. It, it's not predictable. It's not in any way like your typical GA aircraft. And I can see why. That's why I think I'm enjoying this so much. It does take a huge amount of getting used to. Now, we're going to be landing on runway 33. K Blue is, I think, on this ridge here. So if I, if I drop on down, where are we at? Oh, zoom out. Yeah, that is K Blue up there. It's about, it's about five miles away, so I should be able to see it now. And if we pop on down here, I don't have all my views even set up for this yet, so I wasn't going to film it. 3-3 three, three is that way, so we're actually just off the runway. So if I were to turn left right now, I could actually get in the pattern and land. But we won't. We'll do the full thing. We'll do the full Monty and do the full circuit. I'm going to leave it on autopilot so I can keep talking. So, yeah, it's an AccuSim aircraft. It's living and breathing. You can foul the plugs. You can break it. If you don't treat it right on the ground, it, it won't treat you right in the air. And every flight is unique. Every flight is unique. I took this. I took off here earlier in Cape Luke. So I was filming for another review. I'm doing a hardware review. So I used this aircraft. Took off from Cape Luke. Didn't realize a little bit of crosswind. I took off. Oh my goodness! Crosswind caught me as I came off this runway, which is elevated, of course. There it is. There. Came off this runway. Hit the ridge. Wind caught me. Boom! Sideways he went. That was a bit of a, a challenge. Every flight different. Every flight unpredictable. Every flight very very satisfying fulfilling. We're just going runway heading. We'll overfly the runway when we do a full pattern and go land. Beautiful scenery. I highly recommend you get it, by the way, if you like flying in uh, scenic terrain around California, where not everybody else is. There's three airports included in Cape Blue from Orbex. I can't remember all of them. I think it's Eagle County. There's Cape Blue down here, which is Blue Ranch, I think. And there's another one. And unfortunately, I don't remember, as always, with the Orbex stuff. Utterly draw dropping, especially in prepared version 4. Much like this aircraft, utterly jaw dropping, especially in prepared version 4. Great performance, but then I'm running a Jetline Systems PC. You can see that in my about spec. I get great performance in everything. Um, yeah, I have everything pretty much turned up. Maybe I don't have all the scenery turned up in, in uh, the level of detail as high as it could possibly be, but I could. Love my Jetline PC. Love this aircraft and the scenery, it's fantastic. All right, so we're overflying the airport. I'll just get on over here. By the way, that reminds me, moving around here, you kind of expect using chase plane for it to interact with the aircraft to balance, but it unfortunately doesn't. But you can set up the weights and balances of the aircraft. So I do have this set up for me. It's, it's set up as me as the pilot, nobody else in it, and 50 pounds of luggage in the back. I don't know what 50 pounds of luggage would be, but I've got 50 pounds of luggage in the back. 90 degrees, please. Let's go on around here to about there. And we'll start preparing this to land. So we'll pop open the checklist as usual. Oh, this is great, by the way. Look at this. I'm filming a 4K. I always film a 4K. People say, why don't you upload the videos of 4K? Because it would take a week to do so. But anyway, I film a 4K and I downscale. I think the effect is pretty good. So I downscale it to 1080p. But this is the first A2A AccuSim aircraft I have ever seen, which has a scaling user interface. You can scale this so it's readable at 4K, which is wonderful. Absolutely delightful. Not had that before. Anyway, autopilot's going to go off in a minute. We're going to change the uh, cow flaps all the way in. We'll switch the fuel tank here. Oh, wrong. Don't do Don't do Don't do Yeah. That way. There we go. Mixture's going to go rich because we are going to land. But we'll do that in a second after I turn again. Whoa. Uh, so cow flaps are closed. Mixture's going to go rich. Our temperature's already set. If the airport elevation is over 4,000 feet lean, so I've already got it lean, I'm going to enrich it. Max airspeed for dropping the gear would be 154. We're currently well under that. We could drop the gear now, but we're not going to. There it is over there, quite a way out.
bit of a challenging airport to land at, as you can see. So you want prop high RPM. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start pulling the power back now. We'll turn the autopilot off. There we go. I have that nicely bound to my controls, as it should be. We'll drop the power off here. You will get a beep, beep, beep warning if you go idle power, which you shouldn't obviously do. Right now, go full, full prop. All right, I'm going to start descending here. Again, the airport's at 5,300. So I think I'm going to go down that valley. We'll leave the flight director on because it's kind of useful. If you had the flight director on and heading hold, this yellow bar here will show you where you need to bank, basically, where you need to fly, which is useful. I find it useful. I'm not descending, am I? I'm actually climbing. There we go. All right. So now we're descending. Now the speed is coming off. So we'll go 90 degrees to the left now, again about there-ish. You see that flight director? It's telling me I need to bank. Because I have altitude hold on, it's also telling me to pull back, which I'm not going to do. We'll turn the altitude hold off. There we go. Keep on descending. 6,900 feet. Got to be very conscious of the altitude here because of these massive mountains and ridges. Where's my runway? There it is. So we're probably going to hold about uh, 6,300, which is 1,000 feet above the runway until we're established. So I'm going to drop some flaps down. Flaps are cool. You hold a flap switch and watch the flap indicator come down, which you can't see there, until you get the desired flap. So 10 degrees, that's perfect for me. A bit less power now. See the aircraft starting to shake it. By the way, this is the first aircraft where after takeoff, I've applied the brakes. Because after takeoff, there was some rumbling and shaking going on in the cabin here. And I'm like, what is, that's my wheels spinning. So I had to apply the brakes as I retracted the landing gear, which was phenomenal. You can hear the air rumble now, drag as I drop the gear. All right, let's make sure I got all my lights on. I don't really need to, of course, but I'm going to just because. Okay, flaps, next stage, that'll do. Bit more power. Don't want to be descending this harshly right now. We are only about, gosh, 700 feet above the runway at this point. I don't want to be climbing either. Let me show you this all dirted up outside. Absolutely beautiful. Dynamic lighting as well, of course, which you see at night or early evening, late morning. Sorry, early morning, early evening. There we go. Let's turn around here for flaps. Basically hold that flaps button down now until the uh, flaps noise stops. Watch that speed, frugal. Just trim, trim, trim. Getting a bit of uh, interaction with the wind here, which is great. Oh, uh, A2A, I know you watch my videos. When are you going to do something for X-Plane? <laughs> I know you've always said no, but just I'm just kind of dreaming. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? All right. Descending nicely. Probably want to descend a little bit more. There's no lights on this runway. I'm not using the ILS or anything. It's purely visual. A bit like my Tapini videos now, isn't it? It's rocky, mountainous terrain. This is a challenge. This is a beast to land. I'm actually pulling back on the yoke, so I'm going to trim that out. There we go. So now I'm not applying any back pressure to the yoke, and I can adjust my rate of descent with power here. Maybe 200 feet above. Minimums, minimums. Doesn't look much, does it? Looks like a, a little piece of scenery anybody could develop in their spare time, but it's not. Once you get on the ground, you'll notice there's a ton of detail here. This, because it's such a remote place, in the real world, people come here to stargaze because there's not a lot of light pollution. So as a result of that, there's actually a couple of uh, telescopes at the, re at the airport you can pay to use. Mini observatories. Oh, a little bit off. Got a bit of a crosswind. Not ideal, not ideal, not ideal, not ideal, not ideal. Oh my gosh. Oh, awful. It's always when I film. I feel like I've said many times, awful, awful landing. I should have gone around. But I want to show you this beastie on the ground. So I do need to turn around to go park, but I'm not. I'm actually, yeah, well, let me, let me turn this around, show you what it's like on the ground. It's kind of neat on the ground because 
it, it requires very precise amounts of power. So look, just under 1,000 RPM. We're not moving. Just over 1,000 RPM, about 1,100, maybe 1,200. We're moving, which is kind of cool. It takes a bit of getting used to that, but you can adjust just how fast you're going by really finessing the throttle over and under that 1,200, 1,150 RPM range on the ground to control fast slow. I like it. Let's drive on back here. I'm fairly sure that left mag is, is kaput and I'm gonna need to replace it, but we'll see. I have tried just sitting on the ground and, and running the engines up to, to blow any gunk out of there, but it didn't work for me. Okay, let's bring the flaps up. I don't need those down anymore. It's pretty chilly here today, only about 10 degrees, but even so, I don't want to fog up everything, so we'll open the window. There we go. And uh, we'll pull the headset out so you can hear a bit more of this beautiful engine. And of course, the noise from the wind of the propeller rushing past that now open window. Another Accusim feature that we adore. If you don't have, look, even if this is not your kind of aircraft, if you don't have an 8-way Accusim aircraft, especially one of the GA ones, go get one, really. Put it on the Christmas list. You owe it to yourself. It's it's one of those icons. 8-A and Accusim are, are, are icons of flight simulation in the same way that PMDG are, you know, in the same way that um, the Majestic Dash 8 is an icon of simulation. You owe it to yourself. Go get an 8 way Accusim aircraft. I would recommend this one, but it is a bit of a challenge. Look, there's one of the observatories I'm telling you about. See the telescopes? Actually, two of them. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Airport in the middle of nowhere. You come up here, jump in there, and just view the stars. And another one, three in total there. Because, again, it's so remote, there's not a whole lot of light pollution here. It's an ideal place to stargaze. Yeah, I've been here before. I knew there was a parking place on my left. All right. Let's see if we can run the checklists, and because uh, we didn't on the landing, which was terribly, terribly remiss of me. All right, let's get this idling around 10,000 again. You can see, as I brought it up, the suction pump's kicking in, causing the artificial horizon there to bounce around a little bit. Vacuum pumps. Okay, we already did all of that and all of that and all of that. So flaps up, neutral trim now. All right, wrong camera drop on down here. There's my trim. I do actually have the lights on as well, by the way, at the moment. I'll fix that in a minute. Neutral trim. Great. Cow flaps open. Don't overheat. Cow flaps are now open. Brakes are set. Electrical and radios can go off. Well, I can't turn that GPS off. I can turn the rest of these off. Like so. Avionics off. Okay. So throttle now close. Well, no. Let's turn all these lights off. Because like I said, I am running the lights. The lighting on this is great. Look at this. I'm going to put up the uh, flood down here. Very beautiful. Very subtle. Tons of attention to detail. Tons of really beautiful beta effects as well. Right, turn the backlighting on these gauges off. And this. We don't need a strobe light on at this point. It's silly. Or taxi. Or landing. Or nav. Just a rotating beacon is fine. Peter, he can go off. Great. So with all that done, throttle closed, mixture off, cut off. There we go. Let the engine settle. That noise you hear is the rotating beacon. Look, underneath the aircraft. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what have we got? Uh, magnets are off. Battery and alternator now go off. So I should turn the autopilot off while we're here. Alternator, battery can go off. Put the yoke back here. Install the control lock. I think it's, no, nope. I don't know how to install the control lock. I thought it was that. I can do it over here. And this handy pop up here, control lock. There we go. Wheel chocks, tie downs. If I wanted to put the engine heater on, just leave the cow flaps fully open. And we'll jump outside. Beautiful. Utterly, utterly beautiful. So like I said, all the usual pop-ups, you've already seen number two and number three there. We've also got here weight and balance. 
Um, so we can change the fuel tanks, tip tanks, passengers, baggage, and so on and so on. We have a built-in compass and navigation display, radio display if you don't want to do everything in the cockpit, and of course, maintenance here. So this aircraft has not been inspected, and I'm not going to click on overhaul, but there's a number of things that you can do here. So I could remove the tip tanks, for example, which will change the flight characteristics of the aircraft. I can add curtains here, which changes how it looks. Look, because now I've got curtains, and they kind of obstruct your view, to be honest with you, but that's authentic. Let's go back over here. I don't like them. I'm going to take them out. I can change the engine between the 520 and the 550. The 550 is the more powerful engine, the kind of sporty racing version, 300 horsepower, in fact. As you can see down here, that's the one I was just flying just now. Uh, what else have we got? I think that's about it. Change the tires, change the battery, the usual lovely stuff. And of course, you can open up the engine here and start messing around and doing stuff in there. Let's inspect. I know that left mag was giving me some issues. So here's the inspection coming and the results. Careful with the flaps. Some parts are wearing out. That's useful. And the spark plugs are a little foul. So my right flap. I've got to be careful with my right flap. I'm not going to fix it. I'm not going to fix it yet. It's, it says careful. It doesn't say change it. I'm going to be careful with my flaps. We'll, we'll lower them. Because it's wearing out, I'm going to lower them at a slower speed. I'm not going to rely on them so much now. I'm going to have to start babying them a little bit. Again, a beautiful feature of this aircraft. Spark plugs are a little fouled. I need to make sure they don't get completely fouled. Lean the engine more on the ground to idle. Lean it appropriately in the air. Great stuff. Awesome, awesome stuff. One thing I have long asked A2A4, and again, A2A, I know you're watching this. When are you going to give us costs in here? I would love, absolutely love, the ability to go in here, change my spark plugs, change my oil, which I can do here, um, and replace things, change things, fix things, inspect things, and have a tally, a log of the cost of ownership of this aircraft that matches up to the real world. For me, that would complete the AccuSim experience. This is a living, breathing, albeit virtual aircraft. I would love to have what it virtually costs to keep this aircraft living and breathing based on how I treat it. Anyway, that's it. That's kind of my impromptu, unplanned first impressions view of the phenomenal A2A Akisim Bonanza, their latest gem, their latest work of art. And it really is in every sense from the flight model to the simulation of the systems, to the simulation of the engine, to the simulation of the controls, to the visuals. Everything about this aircraft is of the highest quality. It is my favorite A2A aircraft. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you all very soon.